Hey, what's going on guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, I'm going to give you a 12-week structured program that will help you to learn and internalize all of the notes on the entire fretboard. So there's a lot of videos about this subject out there. There's a lot of uh, apps. There's a lot of systems and stuff like that. From what I found, a lot of these systems, they have two flaws. Number one, a lot of them aren't really designed to teach you internalization of the notes. So what I mean by that is if you ask a guitar player that's been playing for five years or something like that, you say, hey, what note is that right there, fifth fret of the low E string? Most guitar players that have been playing for a while are instantly going to know that that is the note A. They don't even have to think about it. They've watched thousands of YouTube videos that start off by teaching the A minor pentatonic scale. They know that it starts there. They know that that's the note A. That is internalized in their brain. If you ask that same person, you say, hey, what note is that right there on the 10th fret of the B string? They may be able to figure it out. It may take them a second, two seconds, something like that. They may be able to say, okay, well, if that's the note A right there, I skip a string, move up two frets, that's also the note A. Skip a string, move up three frets, that's also the note A. They can arrive at that answer. But that's not internalizing that note. They had to think about it. It's not instant recall of the note. They don't know that that is the note A in the same manner that that is the note A. The second issue is that there's 12 notes in total, and of those 12 notes, five of them can either be called by their sharp name or by their flat name. So let's say that you've been using a fretboard memorization app or something like that, and you've learned all the notes in your fretboard, but you've learned those five notes by their sharp names. So Take this note, for example, right here, ninth fret of the B string. You've learned and you've internalized that that is the note G sharp. All right, so if someone says, hey, what's that note? You instantly can say, okay, that's G sharp. No question, didn't have to think about it. You have that internalized. Now, let's say you find yourself in a situation where you're playing in a key where they're using flats. They're using all flat names. So that's not going to be referred to as G sharp anymore. That's going to be referred to as A flat. So you may not have that same instant recall of that note as referred to as A flat. That may be G sharp to you, but if someone says, hey, where's A flat on the B string? You may have to think about it. You have to be like, oh, okay, well, if that's A, oh, there's A flat. Took you a second to arrive at that answer, but that is not instantaneous recall. So this 12-week program addresses all of that stuff. It will have you internalize all the notes on the fretboard so you just know them instantaneously, and it will also address the whole sharps versus flats thing. All right, so before we get into the 12 week program, I need to make sure that you can find any note first. All right, so this isn't the instantaneous recall thing that I'm talking about, but I need to know that you can find your notes because you need to know what to practice for the 12 week program, which will be coming up. So first of all, you need to know what your notes are on the low E string and on the A string. So how do you do that? So you know that the open E string is the note E. So the musical alphabet only goes from A to G. So there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Those are the only letters that are found in the musical alphabet. And then there's sharps and flats. So sharp means one note higher than, flat means one note less than. So there's no sharp or flat in between the notes E and F, and there's no sharp or flat in between the notes B and C. All right, so I know that's a lot to take in if you're new to this stuff, but that's the way that the musical alphabet works. It is what it is. So let's just go up the E string applying what I just said right there. So you know that the open E string is the note E. So the next note would be F. As I said, there's no sharp or flat in between the notes E and F, and there's no sharp or flat in between the notes B and C. So open E, F, F sharp, or G flat. All right, so one higher than F is F sharp, one less than G is G flat. All right, then you have G. One higher than G is G sharp, or one lower than A is A flat. All right, so that's how that's how the musical alphabet works. Then you have A sharp or B flat. Then you have B. Then there's no sharp or flat in between B or C, so it's B, and then there's C, and then there's C sharp or D flat, and then there's D, D sharp or E flat, and then there's E again. So that's all the notes. That's all the notes in the low E string. Between the open string and the 12th fret, that's all your notes. Everything just repeats after the 12th fret. So you have E, F, F sharp, or G flat, G, G sharp, or A flat, A, and so on. So everything repeats every 12 frets. 
So all the strings work the same way. It's just that each string is a different starting point. So on the low E string, it starts on the note E, and then you move up through the musical alphabet until you get to the next E. On the A string, it starts on the note A, that's the open A string. You move up through the musical alphabet until you get to the 12th fret, then you're back at A again. On the D string, you start on the note D, you move up through the musical alphabet until you get to the 12th fret, you're back at D again. The next thing to know before we get into this 12-week program is the way that you can find the notes on the other strings. So if you know your notes on the low E string and on the A string, you can find the notes on any other string. It'll take you a second, may take you two seconds, but you can still find them. So the way that it works is if you know your note on the low E string, then the same exact note is going to be found on the D string two frets higher. So if this is the note A right here on the fifth fret of the low E string, you're going to skip a string and then you're going to move up two frets. That's also the note A. If that's the note G on the third fret of the low E string, you skip a string, you come up to the D string, you move up two frets, that's also the note G. Now the same concept applies to the A string as well. So if you know your notes on the A string, you can easily find your notes on the G string by simply skipping a string and moving up two frets. So if that's the note D right there, fifth fret on the A string, you just skip a string, move up two frets, that's also the note D. If that's the note E right there, seventh fret of the A string, you skip a string, go up two frets, there's the note E again. When you get to the D string and the G string, then it's skip a string and move up three frets. So if you know that that's the note G right there, fifth fret of the D string, you're gonna skip a string, come up to the B string, and then move up three frets, that's also the note G. Or if you know that that's the note A right there, seventh fret of the D string, just skip a string, come up to the B string, move up three frets, that's also the note A right there, 10th fret of the B string. And then the same concept applies if you're starting on the G string. So let's say that you know that that's the note C right there, fifth fret, skip a string, come up to the E string, move up three frets, there's also the note C. Or if you know that that's the note D right there, seventh fret, you can find that same note by skipping a string, come up to the E string, and then move up three frets, there's also the note D. So that's how the notes on the fretboard are laid out. So that's not instantaneous recall of the notes, but that will still allow you to find a note if you have to. That's how the fretboard is laid out. Let's get into the 12-week program now. So the program works by focusing on two chords at a time for one week each. So there's 24 chords in total, there's 12 major chords, and there's 12 minor chords. So for week one, you're going to focus on one major chord and one minor chord. For week two, you're going to focus on one major chord and one minor chord. You're going to do the same thing for all 12 weeks. So you don't have to do it in this order, but I would recommend just kind of using the circle of fifths and going around the circle of fifths in a clockwise manner. So on week one, you're going to do C major and C minor. On week two, you're going to do G major, G minor. On week three, you're going to do D major and D minor. And you're just going to move around the circle of fifths in a clockwise direction until the 12 weeks is done. So for each week, you're just going to focus on the three notes that make up the triad for the chords that you're working on for that week. So in week one, you're working on C major and C minor. So the three notes that make up a C major chord are C, E, G. The three notes that make up a C minor chord are C, E flat, G. Remember, the only difference between a major chord and a minor chord is that one note, that one note right in the middle, it's known as the third. A major chord has a root, a third, and a fifth. Those are your three notes. A minor chord has a root, a minor third, and a fifth. A minor third is just a flattened third. It's one less note than the third. So a major chord is root, third, fifth. A minor chord is root, flat third, fifth. So it's not required, but it's highly recommended that you practice this stuff over a single chord backing track. So as you're practicing the C major chord, play it over a C major chord that's just being looped over and over and over. If you have a looping pedal, you can easily put this on your looper pedal. The reason this is important is because you're going to get to hear what the root sounds like played along with the C major chord. You're going to get to hear what the third sounds like played along with the C major chord. You're going to get to hear what the fifth sounds like played along with the C major chord. You're going to do the same thing with the minor chord. Let me give you a quick demo of what that sounds like.
So if you spend an entire week doing that, just working on just those two chords, the C major chord and the C minor chord, you're going to become very, very comfortable finding all of the C's all over the neck. You're going to become very comfortable finding all of the E's, all of the E flats, and all of the G's. So you're going to have four notes down. There's 12 notes in total. You're going to have four of them. Remember, we still have the sharps and flats thing to, to worry about, but I'll be talking about that next. But hopefully you can see where we're going with this. So you just focused on two chords for this first week, and you already have four notes. And those four notes can be found in a bunch of different locations. You've got a lot accomplished in that first week right there. General rule of thumb here is that the major chords get the flat name, and the minor chords get the sharp name. So what I mean by that is B flat major chord. You're typically going to call that a B flat major chord. You're not generally going to call it an A sharp major chord. Same thing with the E flat major chord. You're not going to call it a D sharp major chord. You're going to call it an E flat major chord. So the major chords, they get the flat name. And then the minor chords, they go by the sharp names. So F sharp minor. You're going to call it F sharp minor as opposed to G flat minor. Same thing with C sharp minor. It's not going to be called D flat minor. It's going to be called C sharp minor. And then you have G sharp minor. It's not going to be called A flat minor. It's going to be called G sharp minor. So the minor chords get the sharps, and then the major chords get the flats. So B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Minor chords. F sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, D sharp minor, a sharp minor. Now in practice, this major chord is going by their flat name and minor chords going by their sharp name. That's true most of the time, but it's not 100% of the time. But for the purpose of this 12 week program, we're going to say it's true 100% of the time. This just gives you structure. It leaves you with no questions on which one to go with. It's just this is the way that we're doing it for this program. So if you actually follow this program and you do this for all 12 weeks and you spend, say, 30 minutes a day on it, maybe 15 minutes on the first chord, 15 minutes on the second chord. So let's say you're on week one, which has the objective of C major and C minor. So in week one, you're going to learn where all the C's are, where all the E's are, where all the E flats are, and where all the G's are. By the time you get to week two, which has G and G minor as your objective, the, the notes that make up a G major chord are G, B, and D. The notes that make up a G minor chord are G, B, flat, and D. So that's four notes right there. But one of those notes is G, and you've already trained yourself in week one to learn where all the G's are. But in week one, you learned where the G's are as the fifth of the underlying chord. So in week one, your objective was C major, C minor, C, E, G, root, third, fifth, or C minor chord, C, E flat, G, root, minor, third, fifth. So you've learned where all the Gs are on the fretboard, but you learned it as being the fifth of the underlying chord. By the time you get to week two, you kind of already know where all the Gs are, but now it's the root of the underlying chord. By the time you get to week five, which has the objective is E major and E minor, E major chord is E, G, sharp, B. E minor is E, G, B. So again, that note G comes up again. You already know where your note G is. But now you're going to be focusing on this note G as the third of the underlying chord. So not only are you learning the notes of the fretboard, the sharps, the flats, when they're supposed to be sharp, when they're supposed to be flat, not only are you hearing these notes you know, in reference to the underlying chord that you're playing along with, but you're learning these notes as the root, as the third, and as the fifth. So there's just so much going on in this 12-week program as opposed to just popping on a fretboard you know, note memorization app or something like that, hitting play, and playing some sort of memorization game. Maybe that's for you, but I find that I would rather learn a bunch of stuff at once in addition to learning the notes of the fretboard. And that's what this 12-week program is all about. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.